at the Strengthening Disability Advocacy Conference in Melbourne, and we have the celebrity guest here with us now, who's Adam Ferrier, rolling his eyes, who I know very much from Gruen, the TV program about marketing and advertising, but you do lots of other work. Can you introduce yourself? Sure, you don't watch Sunrise on a Saturday morning? Uh, not yet, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so my name's Adam. I'm, in, I'm a psychologist, uh, but also now find myself in advertising, so I kind of blend what I know about psychology, what I know about advertising, which is both about how to change people's behaviour, uh, whether they want their behaviour changed or not, kind of, yeah. um, and bring those two skill sets together, and, and that's what I do. So we, what, we're going to talk first about the most successful social change campaign that you've been involved in. What was it, and what made it work? Um, the one I, really, one I really like talking about is for the Red Cross Blood Service. Uh, before we came along, they had a... Um, a tagline which was so Red Cross Blood Service is uh, you know the service where you can kind of go and give blood and before we came along their tagline was roll up your sleeves and roll up your sleeves kind of communicates my god this is going to be hard the needle's going to go in it's going to jab me and all that kind of stuff and we had a look at the data and the data said that uh, only three percent of Australians give blood regularly um, but about 90 percent of Australians think it's a really good idea what stops them giving blood is not their motivation, they all want to do it. It's just the fact they all think it's too hard to do. And so what we did was try to make it feel like it is an easier task as possible to give blood. And, um, and so we kind of came up with a campaign which was all about the biscuit you receive at the end of giving blood. And so if, the, if all you got after giving blood was a little biscuit, then the actual task of we're asking of you cognitively kind of diminishes as well. So it was really successful, um, inquiries and, and so on went kind of uh, one of the most successful campaign I think the Red Cross Blood Service has ever done um, and I'm proud of that because it was approaching it in a really different way, it came up with a really novel solution um, but I like the psychology behind it by making a task seem as small as possible mm -hmm. to reduce people's kind of cognitive fear of what, what, what might happen. So before we get into therefore what, how we can take that approach um, in the disability sector um, you said you're a consumer psychologist, and I'll get you to explain what that is. But within that, where does prejudice, which is uh, what is going to lie behind the other questions we've got here today, where does that come from, and where do you actually go about shifting that? Um, consumer, psych mm. consumer psychologist. So I am a psychologist and studied for six years and did my masters in clinical psychology. I did my masters in identifying the underlying constructs of cool people, so what makes people cool, mm -hmm. um, and then did also did a bachelor of commerce. In Australia, you can call any psychologist who's registered can call themselves a psychologist, and then there's six different terms you can call yourself a forensic, a clinical, a counselling, different types, neuro. Um, but, but the term consumer is not a registered body within Australian mm -hmm. psychology, so any psychologist can call themselves a consumer psychologist if they want to. And call yourself a pet psychologist if you're a registered psychologist as well. Uh, I'm not a pet psychologist, I choose to call myself a consumer psychologist because that's the kind of a world I operate in. In the US and the uh, UK, uh, the consumer psychology is, uh, you can actually study to get the qualifications of a consumer psychologist. Australia's not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I'm all about people's relationship with brands, businesses, consumption, how we choose to buy what we buy. Um, that's, that's what I do. And the role of prejudice in all of that, but you know, also in social change, how do you see that? Where does it come from? Um, I think the role of prejudice normally comes from ignorance and fear. I think most people are born good. Most people are just trying to get by, and therefore I don't think we're born with inherent dislike towards anything or anyone. I think it just comes from, normally from a lack of education. Uh, I think my kind of, most psychology says that action changes attitude faster than attitude changes action. So the best way to kind of uh, mitigate or deal with prejudice is to get people involved or interacting with people who are different to them in some particular way, get them to shake hands, meet people, say hello, and just create, make the interaction happen and then the prejudice will disappear. So um, it's born through ignorance. So what you're here to talk about today is selling the unsellable, which is how the disability community has, has, has phrased this for the conference. What do you need to address that prejudice? Where, how do we need to shift that here? What's your message going to be? Um, I, think our peop I think the disability um, industry, community, sector, community. Sector, um, 
makes it really hard for itself. I think they kind of say we have to have, we have to be more real, have more kind of reality kind of, and people, and more people with disabilities kind of in showing their, the reality of what it's like in society. But outside of the disability sector, you don't really do that. To make things cool or to make things aspirational, you gloss things up, you shine things up, you, you put on makeup, you buffer things. Mm. And so we're putting a harder yardstick on ourselves in the disability sector than we do in reality where you can kind of glam things up, put a thumping soundtrack behind a normal person and they suddenly become a lot cooler than they are. And so some of the kind of, some of the um, really successful campaigns or ideas that have kind of really elevated disability are not things where they're just projecting the reality of disability, but they're making them look bloody cool. Like if you think about the kind of the, the Meet the Superhumans to Channel 4, they had a fantastic soundtrack. They made kind of uh, people with various disabilities kind of fly through the air, do crazy things and, and, and so on. And so I think, you know, reality is important. It's, it's important to kind of address the reality head on. But there's nothing wrong with it as well as kind of the saying, you know, we can, we can put a thumping soundtrack behind these people or we can make them look bloody cool and aspirational as well. And I know that sounds kind of glib, but that's kind of what I want to challenge. I think it'd be really interesting when you bring that up because I think there would be some push on that one too. Yeah. So we're going to do a groom and if you got the brief therefore to um, address the prejudice towards people with, disab with disability but also the way that just attitudes in general, what would you do? What's the first thing you do? Um, it, kind of, it kind of depends. So number one, I'd either A, find a dumping soundtrack and B, and make and, and kind of have a hero's journey mm. with a person um, with a disability and almost kind of, like I'd almost cast it and make the whole thing kind of for um, able-bodied people and then just put a, a, a person who had a particular disability in that same environment and just kind of ignore the disability. Or the other way you do it is to, um, we talk a lot about Batman marketing, uh, where I work and Batman marketing is about not only just embracing your weakness but amplifying your weakness and, and Batman was the only superhero who didn't have any superpowers but had a massive fear of bats and when he got all the money um, he, um, he amplified his weakness which was his fear of bats and therefore robbed his weakness of his power. So the other way to go about it would be to kind of turn the disability into a, into a superpower if you like and, and make it feel very, very um, for want of a better word, cool. However, I don't want to come across as being insensitive and I realise that um, a disability isn't necessarily, it can be hard or can be painful or can have real, obviously, um, issues with it. So in the, in the right circumstance where it's right to amplify uh, the perceived weakness, I'll do that and turn into a strength by just embracing head on. In the other way, in the other environment, I'll just uh, treat people with disability in exactly the same way as I would treat anybody who we try to make look cool or aspirational in society, which is um, give them a good soundtrack to to have behind them. Your, your um, gifts may be better used in Canberra at the moment, perhaps, to try oh. and make somebody look cool. Well, ScoMo this morning looked like a dick, didn't he? <laughs> uh, that was quite I funny. missed it this morning. Oh, did you? He, he had a, a hip hop uh, little clip, and then uh, anyway, he, he, he got it taken down. Yeah, good luck to you. Oh. <laughs> Hip hop is only something for people who can pull it off, yeah? That, I think so. Yeah. Adam, thank